Welcome to CT Small Business Toolkit, where small business innovators and influencers share the advice that will help you turn your idea into a business and your business into a success. Let's get started. Mike, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Pleasure to be with you. You have had many different entrepreneurial experiences over the years. I briefly give our listeners an overview of how you got the, the urge to, to start your own business and, and where that path has taken you. Like many people who start their business, they sometimes get frustrated in that maybe people don't think of take your ideas or or think your ideas are, are valuable. And so, saying that, almost 20 years ago, I I wrote my own business plan for what's a build on your lot custom home builder, and we do custom homes on individual lots. And I wanted to make it very much like a very easy to do, much like production home building. So I wrote a whole business plan for that, and then. When you don't have a lot of money, it's easy to take a, a plunge. And we didn't, I didn't have any money, but uh, made an investment in myself. And uh, we started to, to build three model homes on the side of a, a major freeway. And those were just typically just for models. And that's just for people to look at, to get ideas. And then we would design and build them homes on their own lots. So it was a interesting experience. And, and from start to finish, we were the, the builder the salesperson, the as well as the designer, we, we did everything from start to finish at that time. And given the current business environment, is there any particular advice that you would uh, give to folks uh, starting out right now? Well, I think it's actually a little bit harder to start out right now because they continue to add more and more regulation. But just like when I started, I think that anybody who, if you don't have a lot to lose, then you have everything to gain. And as long as you have a good basis of or background in something you could fall back on like if you were a my wife was an accountant she could go back and work as an accountant so she has a means of making money that always makes it easier i was a home builder and if it didn't work out i could go back and build homes now i might have to pay back a lot of people but at least you have a way to make a living so but if you don't have a lot to lose you got everything to gain all right, let's get into the five tips that you also offer to aspiring and existing business owners. The first one, very simple, vision. But uh, it might not be so simple in, in what exactly that vision ought to look like. What do they need in terms of envisioning their their business and their success uh, before they get started? Well, I think you need to have a really clear business plan. And a lot of people talk about business plans and how important they are. And I'm not a, what I'd call a super educated person or really super organized but a lot of people think I am because I actually write everything down and I put it down as a plan. And I formulate the plan and I worked on that plan for a good six months before I ever started um, my business. And, and then I actually stuck to the plan. And if I go back and read my business plan today, what's amazing is we're exactly what I wrote in a business plan almost 20 years ago. And even visionary ideas like what you want to be should be in your business plan. So what it's going to take to do it and then what do you want to aspire to be, those all ought to be in your business plan. And if you do that, um, you'll probably achieve them because that has your goals out there and, and you know what you're working towards every day. Number two is you have to be able and willing to take risks. And obviously that could deal with money, could deal with leaving a good job you already have to pursue your dream. Uh, what risks are most important to take and, and that people should know about before they go too far down this road? Being willing to invest in yourself, which means invest money, is going to be something really big. And what most people are looking for, if they're going to want to invest in someone who's becoming an entrepreneur or just yourself. And I didn't have any business partners or anything. I invested in myself and took that risk and put whatever I had in the bank in, into the company. That, that's probably the biggest thing is being able to know that you believe in yourself enough to invest in yourself and know that you can you, you can make it in the end. Number three on the list is being fluid, so you can adapt to the fact that things might not work out exactly the way you want. We talked about vision and having that specific plan in place, but what are the keys to being able to adapt to things that, that happen that aren't exactly the way you wish they'd happen? Well, that happens every day, and if you're not willing to adapt and change, then, then being an entrepreneur or, or starting your own business probably isn't for you because you may have a great plan and the plan may not work out quite as you thought it would. And so you need to be able to adapt and change. And whether that means work twice as hard that you thought you were going to have to work or do something different to meet the customer's needs than you thought you would need to, whatever those things are, you have to be willing to do that and put in that, that time. Um, if you're not, you're not going to be successful. And But just to reinforce point number one, that doesn't mean you shouldn't have a plan, right? 
still better have a plan. <laughs> okay. Without the plan, you, you definitely won't be successful. <laughs> Number four is measure outcomes not just on a pass-fail uh, basis as to whether, well, this worked or this didn't work, but how well it worked or how badly it failed. Uh, how, how do you measure effectively? Well, we have a lot of measurements in place, and one of those things is customer satisfaction. So we actually do three surveys of our customer when we write a contract, when we complete their home, and then a year later to find out how we did during that process and how, how we react. And then there's also all your financial measurements, and every month we measure financially how well we're doing. Sales, obviously, your cl- what we call uh, closings or completions when we finish the homes, customer satisfaction. But if you're not measuring them, then you don't know if you're getting better. And people start going, I always call it, run down a, a, maybe a, a path that they shouldn't run down because someone said something. Uh, what is what is really what is everyone really telling you? And by getting surveys and and following things um, closely, you can make sure that you lead yourself to success. We're talking with Mike Feigen, and number five on this list, Mike, is enlist the assistance of others. We've talked to folks in the past that stress the importance uh, of mentors and, and hiring the right people. What assistance uh, is most important to the success of a business? Well, I do think having um, a good group of mentors around as you start this process and as you grow it is very important. And when I first wrote my business plan, I actually met with many, um, some of them were my parents' friends at the time, um, but they were business leaders and people that had been very successful in the businesses they had and showed them my plan and said, does this sound viable? And then secondly, is when I got into business, I joined a, a group that's called Vistage. It's a CEO group. And being around other people that own companies that are of the same size or larger and how they handle the growth and how they do things, that was very helpful as well. And so basically what you're saying here is you don't have to find people who are doing the same type of work. People who are good business people will be able to help you regardless of of whether they're anywhere close to the same type of product or service that you're providing. Actually, it's better because you get different ideas from different industries, and you can then use those ideas within our my industry, and that might be something that's very unique to me versus someone else, so you can kind of set yourself apart. Mike, just about out of time. Uh, where can folks learn more about you and the work you do? Um, if you go to MainStreetAmerica.com, you can see what we've done here in Houston. It's the um, nation's only year-round parade of showcase homes, and so it's MainStreetAmerica.com. Mike, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on CT Small Business Toolkit. Be sure to visit our website, ct.walterskluwer.com, and follow at CT Corporation on Twitter. We'll see you next time on CT Small Business Toolkit.